ladies and gentlemen and all my non-binary friends and welcome to the very last episode of Arcade Reaction. Let's go! My name is Charvana, I go by the she, her pronouns and I, uh, this is my channel. But uh, yeah, I got two guests with me. So my two guests are... Zephyr. Going by... She, they. And... Actor Pat. Going by... He, him. And y'all, we will be doing this as a watch along series format. If you guys don't know what a watch along series format is, you haven't been on this channel very much. But uh, anyway, you just kind of go ahead and open up Netflix or something else that has Arcane on one side and us up on another screen. We will count down three, two, one, go, and we'll push play at the exact same time and we'll be watching together. That way that you can watch along with somebody else. And if you our reactions get to be too talky or too loud, you can always mute us and keep it going. And then also you have us at the very end talking about it all together. So it's just like watching with your friends in real life. But this time you can mute us if we're too much. <laughs> but you guys, do we have anything else we wanted to say before we get into this very last episode? I don't think so. I'm very interested to see how it's gonna wrap up. This okay. last episode, I just felt bad for the red-headed girl that Caitlin was seeing, uh, Maddie. Maddie. The, the, I have the a meme. feeling we're never going to see Maddie again. Probably no, not. No, but it's the, the meme, that whole relationship, the girl that she tells you not to worry about, and it's Vi. <laughs> <laughs> you should always worry um, about just, that. <laughs> it's just like, oh. <laughs> uh, but any kind of predictions, who's going to either die or survive, which one's the smaller list? I do think well, Jinx will be the like the hero sacrifice, but we will see. There's a lot of characters in this show, and a lot of them don't really have like mm -hmm. a story. So as far as are there more people gonna die than live? I think more people are gonna die than live, but they might not be mm -hmm. characters that like have names or that we care about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not I sure think... how many of the game characters they're actually going to kill off. True. Uh, I think Victor has to go. Because if they're if the whole point is the staving off the robot apocalypse, uh, like that seems like it has to be a, a thing. And maybe Jace goes in doing that. Like they'll go down as science bros together. <laughs> that would be very poetic. I'm going to go ahead and just throw it out there. I think everybody is going to die. I feel like there's too Everyone? many main characters and maybe it's Jinx that puts it all, but. I'm still going I think they're gonna my, reset. My, I think they're gonna reset the yeah. timeline. That's possible. I think I'm, I'm going my mid season guess where Echo now has time travel and much like the meta of the game being, let's start a new round and. Well, that's and Echo how said wrap it up. two episodes ago, do you ever wish you could just stay in one moment forever? Well, here's the thing. When you can keep going back in time four seconds, you can stay in one moment forever. <laughs> Possible. But are you all ready for the final episode of Arcane? I'm Ali. so ready. Let's do it. Let's go. This is Arcane season two, episode nine, starting in three, two, one, go. Lovely. Flip, place, release, and... Girl. Beautiful, but that takes effort. The amount of conditioner I... you'd use? Oh my gosh.
Is Echo's playing the game. Saves death? coming. intro got like chills that whole time dude wild it's like i think maybe everybody... the mask just signifies that he loses his identity i think so too mm -hmm. I don't think like it's not literal. Yeah. Like not everybody gets that chance what Echo just did and oof. Mm hmm It's a lot. <laughs> but also having to be so active with it and like ready because you only have those four seconds. <laughs> yeah. Nature's just wild, dude. No matter what man-made problems we have, nature really lose on. Unless it's global warming. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. 
Oh, she's got like Kratos weapons. Crazy. That's gnarly. I, ah. Uh... But because of the ruins. I was wrong, Maddie's in it. Hmm. Never mind. <laughs> Zombie Warwick. Mm hmm. This was probably the end face that we saw. Ufta. No! Oof. Oh, Aww. shit! <laughs> oh.
Damn. Friend or foe? I'm gonna guess foe. <laughs> yeah. Shit, dude. I don't like her character, but she, she is does? very badass. <laughs> When you get a coral entrance. Oh shit! <laughs> Told you! Oh, friend! Ah, you little mess! Damn. Oh, oh, oh! Oh, oh, oh! Ouch! I didn't know it was going to be specifically her, but I was like, somebody. Yeah, it was the gas mask. Like, eyes that we saw. Somebody was going to betray, I just didn't know who. Oof. <sighs> Mel. Uh huh. You like she protected you too. Unless I've got I crave violence. <laughs> Scary. <gasps> the hood. She had time to re dye her hair before this, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I didn't think it happened with four seconds. <laughs> Please, please. Bring some colorful hope to this bloodshed. <laughs> Let's go, little musician! Little pianist. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> Brutal.
Oh, he shit. Evolved. Was it a red herring? Not sure. Hold. Science Pro Showdown! Damn. Buddy. Oh my god! Oh my, they're so fast! Yeah. And they're turning everyone they touch. No. This does not bode well. Why make it a fair fight? You don't you don't need to at this point. Oh yes. Oh, I hate that. <laughs> Terrifying. Mm-mm. <laughs> Aw. Oh. <laughs> That's gotta hurt your shoulder so bad. Just like, <laughs> pull it right out of the socket.
She's ghastly. I was waiting for them to help. Oh, yeah. She wants to do it herself. Ah, I don't know. I don't think she wants her to do it. I just think it's like, ugh. Hmm. It's all for nine thousand. <laughs> Her army fellow Mel now. Don't like the back arm.
Excuse them. <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> Oof. Toasty. <laughs> oh, that caught Ted? No. the future that Jace saw. Oof, oof. They just hear one voice, play League of Legends. Mm -hmm. You're a time travel thing, dude. Yep, it's coming down to a reset. I'm over here like one, two, three, four. four. What is the four seconds? What are the four seconds yeah, it's that him. matter? It's him. He, he was the statue. So mm -hmm. he. Uh -huh. this is the same pose. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But this is the, the four second rewind. You have to four second rewind it. Yeah, because a lot of this is happening simultaneously. It could have just been four seconds. Jesus, it's so pretty. Oh, yeah. Oof. Nice. How many times do you think he's been doing that this whole fight? Right? <laughs> Whoopsie. Mulligan. 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 <laughs> uh. 
Oh, that's not far enough. You can't get it far enough. Oh, shit. That's where you're wrong. Oh, these two need to kiss. Mm -hmm. Go save the world, bro. You are my world, bro. <laughs>
Ow. Oh. Woof. Yeah, it's not in there, dude. Ugh, brutal letting the cycle end. Hug.
Oh my goodness. <laughs> How's everyone feeling? I'm good. I'm riding my emotions pretty hard, but it's fine. It's fine. I'm all over the place with that. I'm not going to pretend like I understand every single thing that happened because that's probably going to take like two or three rewatches to get every little tiny detail. But I am fascinated uh, with so many aspects of this. Let's start with the first half of it, if we can, which is just the like pure fight of everything that leads up and, and concludes with the Madarna fight. Um, there's a lot that went on there. There's a lot of different factions, a lot of different fighting, and we jumped right into it. But it was a beautiful way of doing that story-wise, being like, we need to defend this, and then immediately jumping into the action of that. We know exactly what kind of fight we were heading into. We knew exactly the players that were in it. Um, it was a lot. Um, mm. Fascinated by a lot of it. This is kind of like touching into the end, too, but whatever. Well, I'll get there, too. Um, I love that this episode and this entire series has played with gender and stereotypes of gender roles this entire time. The first half was a bunch of, of fighting amongst like the femme presenting cast members and like the mm. actual brute mentality. And by the end, we have the guys having an emotional experience and that being the, the other conclusion. Mm. So I love that we played with the stereotypes of gender when it came to these two things storytelling wise. I feel like that was such a brilliant thing and just so respectful uh, to watch the entire time. And I liked that. Liked it a lot. Um, mm -hmm. oh, I, I, I don't have any particular train of thought right now because <laughs> I'm still sad. I'm still reeling. I'm still going through all the emotions of this is finally over. Um, wow. I love Vic and Jace. They love each other so yeah. deeply. Yeah. I like that every episode there's a new like I'm shipping them. I'm shipping them. <laughs> I ship everybody. I'm shipping them. <laughs> and and to be clear, uh it doesn't necessarily mean sexually. Yeah. I think that sure. some love sure. uh transcends romance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um like Jason Vic. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm I mean I wouldn't say no to a little smooching, but like yeah, yeah, yeah. obviously <laughs> that was that's I mean, not in the cards. You know, for them. like you said it, it, he literally says, in every timeline, it's you. Yeah. Like, that's like, it's very that romantic. is a soul bond connection. Yeah. Like, whether right. or not they do anything romantically with that, it's just like, no, they are fated and destined to They're, be together. They constantly call each other partners, and that's kind of mm -hmm. what it can be, whether it be romantic or sexual or just anything. It's, and there's one of the episodes uh, in this season, he says, it was affection that kept us together. And mm. uh, affection's what like caused them to solve everything together again. So um, I'm very, very appreciative of it. The relationships in this are top tier. I like it a lot. Mm -hmm. I have a about the first part of the episode. Yeah. I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything. Were we supposed <laughs> to know who the Rose person was when she was like, I see through your mask? I still don't really get it. I don't know. Yeah, okay. I don't it know. Because like, she says, I see you deceiver. And yeah. like, I don't know if it was like a small part of my brain was like, was it the mom the whole time? I was but thinking the mom that was too. Up. But then and... we and then we watched the mom die because because they can shape shift. Right. So I was like, oh, did, at some point, did someone take the mom's place? And the mom is in this mm. rose world or something, but then like that is not confirmed nor denied. Somebody's gonna doesn't... have to drop their theories in the comments below because yeah. there's so many different ways to interpret that. I mm. we know that Mel loved her mother, so even though like she had been raised with all of these like warmongering tactics and lessons and everything. It's just a lot. It's a lot to wrap your head around what that final words were supposed to mean. Yeah. So if and you got a, a weird, theory, put it down below. What a weird place to be in. Like, and I'm not a parent, nor do I plan on ever being a parent, so I won't know. But it's the like, you know, you're dying in your daughter's arms, and ha like, it's almost a point of pride. Though it's like you failed, but she learned how to conquer and how to have the wrath because of you and your teachings and so it's like she did embrace what needed to be done to save her city and like i don't know it's I just guess. that weird like oh i failed my plan but i'm also proud of you even though you killed me <laughs> like well and she just said i think it was in the previous episode right like i hope you never have to know what it's like to forsake one mm -hmm. child to save the other but she mm -hmm. kind of did end up having to to deal with that she had to kill her mother to save her city 
okay. um, which is like, okay, they're not both children, but like that's still a huge sacrifice mm -hmm. and um, like to mm -hmm. decide what your loyalty is there. Mm -hmm. I 100% agree. Um, how wild uh, Mel was able to jump into her full abilities at the very start. Uh, I'm just going to say it, even though I do think she has some tactics in there that I really don't like in these episodes, but I still don't feel like we got all the subtext of all the episodes. I like Caitlyn a lot, and I like that fight a lot between the three of them, because it was just, you knew there was a power, power imbalance just because Mama Madarda is like a fierce beast. You were saying like she's, she's a tank. Badass. She's a thousand percent muscle. Uh -huh. A brick wall. And has been in this mentality of war is life, life is war, and that's what you'd go for. And just to see two characters that were the peace bringers, especially, um, mm -hmm. have to put on this protective quality of like, we have to protect our city, we have to protect it in this main fight. Um, I would say out of a lot of the characters, these two were super peacekeepers. And to see them go full-fledged out against the full warmonger was a badass fight to behold. Uh, I thought and Caitlyn was gonna die when she pulled out the thing or tried to slash M M Mama Madarda on the throat or something. I thought that was really gonna go. I actually but... definitely thought Caitlyn was gonna die. Like, right at the beginning, I mean, we see her get stabbed and then we full-on see Maddie shoot her. I mean, the mm. bullet was deflected but she she takes that shot right to the back of the head um mm -hmm. and i was like oh she's not surviving this that was why we got that gratuitous sex scene in the previous episode i was like oh maybe <laughs> that was why they lingered there was because this was like a goodbye but then mm. she survived so they must have and done I that don't, for like, what a crazy badass move though to like she's willing to sacrifice her eye Oh, like totally. in order to get that moment to take the runes off, mm -hmm. and it's like, ugh. Mm -hmm. well, I don't. I don't know if I. It, all. <laughs> God forbid anybody was ever. You know, no. I hope nobody's ever in those situations. But to willingly sacrifice something like that in that moment and like have that thought, like, oh, if I do that, though, I can win. Like, <laughs> and you gotta think, it's not just her eye. She's a sharpshooter. That's her abilities. Mm -hmm. That's where her strength lies. So she's giving up a lot, Maddie. Maddie, I I was saying there's got to be something with this character. She can't just be this character for the the love interest, right? Because a few episodes I was like, why are we having this character? There's got to be something with her. I thought she might be dying. I thought she might be betraying, but I didn't call it in the moment. I just knew it had to be a friend. Whenever we saw that gas mask, like she got knocked out by somebody on her side. I don't know who it was. Didn't know who who to expect. But that had to be freaking Maddie. It's a good and bad thing bad because like uh, you betrayed good because then like we don't have to feel bad about you you being cheated on <laughs> <laughs> but isn't cheated on at that point if she didn't go back to you i don't i don't know i don't know but at the same time it's like okay but that was a fun no, no. that was a fun use of the character well and then yeah like do you think more more of it was because the relationship fell apart she was willing to or was it always that she was like no i'm probably like working behind the scenes no i or... I, th I think it, it was second. because i mean she no i th i mean she s s stood at the door and listened to vi and caitlin and i think that she realized that she was being betrayed and she or like that she mm. was you know i Caitlyn wonder if she was doing that the entire time and that was also her spying and us just taking it at face value that it was a romance thing. I actually, I do think she just turned at the end. I don't think it was premeditated. That's what something I, else I, I want think... you to put down in the comments below. Yeah, I want to know I, what I'm you going would think. With salty X, but yeah, nah, let us know what you think. I think it was always predetermined. I'm so curious to go back and watch the scenes that she. I would, I would agree, agree with you yeah. if we didn't see the scene of her like not closing the door all the way and like listening I, to that specific conversation where like there's clearly tension between them still. Like I think that that, I think that we are shown that to get her motivation. But maybe you're right see. and she had been doing that the whole time and we just didn't know. I just don't know where she would have had the opportunity to plan that or to get the information. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Maybe during that very long jail scene, sex scene. <laughs> jail cell sex scene. Um, I was wrong on, I did not think that the show would let Kate and Vi be together. Aha! I thought they were going to end it with a, uh, I'm glad they are. I like them when she's happy, Caitlin. So but, uh, steamy, 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 steamy. <laughs>
one of the moments I was surprised by was uh, Victor not being in the egg. I liked the the red herring fake out like tactical move uh, by presumably Mama Madarda, but um, I just thought that was smart. I knew that yeah. Victor had to end up at the Jace egg, whatever that machine is, but like I didn't think he was uh, sneaking there initially. <laughs> Um, I love the reveal when Jinx comes in with the different hair and she's got Echo and her homies like on the little fucking skateboard things mm-hmm. and like all of the people we saw flee from last episode mm-hmm. come back to fight. Yeah! That was very It was powerful. a really good feel good like hope moment like <gasps> we could win. This is gonna be good. Mm-hmm. Our girl, I always forget her name. The one with the arm. Savika. Thank you, Savika. Fucking mm-hmm. powering through, and then we see her at the end mm-hmm. on the council. There was a mm-hmm. lot of ending things with like the council. We had some new members on the council, but they did reinstate a new council. Mm-hmm. We did see that from different factions, including the Undercity with her. Um, so it is kind of full circle what we thought that she is a very good leader and that she should be on some kind of power, but she can't do it alone. So putting her on the council is a perfect place for Savika since she gets to like bounce ideas off of other people too but still be like in charge of the undercity mel's ending where she's sitting by herself and she's holding her mother's mask do you what do you think about that like what do you think her story would go for now we think she's still on the council or do we think that she's doing oh no i think that was in that moment when mama madarda dies like and the soldiers all kind of do the salute like and stand down like and we ask like does that mean she controls them now i think she does kind of like they didn't outright say it but i believe the tribe is all about power and strength and you know so it is like oh you took out our leader so now so you think she's going home and then she's Black Panther I, situation. I think she, she now has control of that faction and is probably trying to do more research into like what did happen to Kino. What uh, like she now has the resources uh, to explore that and I presume go on to a storyline we just don't get to know about. You know, learning more about the mages and mm-hmm. the the Rose people. Because, again, I'm still confused on who the deceiver was, but um, I feel like that's her mission right now is she took everybody home to leave Piltover to heal. And, uh, yeah, she, she's she's the powerhouse over there now. I, I think that's my biggest question at the end of the series is who was the deceiver? Yeah, I don't know. What was the point of the whole line of dialogue? And you know what would have <laughs> wrapped it up? If it was Heimerdinger. <laughs> oh my god. Could you imagine? <laughs> so what were you saying about Jinx at the beginning? I was just saying we haven't talked about that. Oh. The the re- I mean, you we were doing the first half of the episode, but we just started at the battle. Yeah, so starting sorry. at the beginning of the episode, which I was just, Jinx. Oh gosh. Um, who cuts all her hair off mm-hmm. um, and decides to just light her home on fire, essentially. And tries to you know, off herself in the process Mm -hmm. several times while Echo is... (laughs) How incredibly impactful to open the the show with that. We Mm -hmm. see Jinx in a variety of situations in this episode and seeing her at her lowest moment where she finally is taking steps to determine her own fate, we'll say. And uh, that's a very very powerfully low moment and not only did we see it one way we saw it like a variety of different ways and that's that's heavy that's super super heavy to have echo have the opportunity to jump back four seconds um repetitively is such a fucking blessing like a lot of people don't get that opportunity um to Mm -hmm. be there in the moment and a lot of people don't have the opportunity to do that kind of stuff so watching it is hard and, and she had conviction because he tried to stop her like six times, times yeah. and she just was like, nope, <laughs> fine. You don't want me to blow both of us up. I'll just toss myself off the edge then. Like she just like was really there. Um, and he was trying, he was super trying. And you could tell like, even with each second, like, I don't know how much you have to like mentally get through those seconds, unless you're just coming up with a new tactic on the fly. But he was making impacts and we got to slowly see that because it did go from blowing both of us up to just harming herself and uh finally to the point of finally getting her to listen well and she only listened because 
she recognized her own handiwork. Yeah, and um, he kind of said it. Like, he kind of gave her her a different path and a different fate for herself to choose. Um, and not just saying you have to be here for a reason, but rather there are options. And you don't have to go this way. I, about that scene, did question, was she experiencing the four seconds too? Because it seems like when we were in the alternate universe, it was only the person pulling the thing that was experiencing it. But it kind of seems like she was just like, I don't know. It felt like she was like remembering that he had would had just tried to stop her. And she was like, no, no, you're too late. I don't know. I'm still going. Like, I, I don't think so. But uh I don't know. Well, that's another one for you in the comments. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I feel like she was just in her feels, but also he would get in an extra syllable. So like any reaction was just like another, like, where's this going? Like Maybe. until the moment, like you said, he bought enough time for her to see the device and hear him talk about the dance. So it was the like combo of like, wait, mm -hmm. he knows something about me. And also what is that? <laughs> You can also think, like, what a wild character in this universe to save her. Because this is also somebody that has constantly been fighting her this whole time. So, mm -hmm. uh, I can only imagine where her head was at and all of that, and why she was just so adverse to it at first. But, it's kind of cool. It's kind of poetic to see, like, somebody that, over all these years, that really wanted to just destroy you, finally coming together and, again, trying to save you. Yeah. That's that's the Poor power Echo. of a smooch, maybe. No, that's the smooch in the other timeline. That's she never smooched him in this timeline, so I don't think it was. Well, a we don't power. know what happened after when the cameras were off. When she I dyed mean, her hair, I mean, I that, like, obviously it wasn't for it wasn't for Jinx, <laughs> no, like, for or, Echo. Or, no. but for Echo, it was just like, wait, I see her in a different light. Like, it was well, the, he saw her potential, like who she could have been yeah. if she didn't have all the odds. It's like there is a her. good person in your core. Mm -hmm. It's just regardless that core. of smooching. Regardless. Regardless. Uh, but also, poor Echo. He, like, you know, he connects with Heimerdinger, and they're on the street together, and then he loses him, and he goes, you know, into this other timeline, and he sees Jinx for, like, who she could have been, Powder for who, who she could have been, and they connect, and he, like, helps her realize her true, like, potential, I guess, and, like, they have... They share this like moment, they get to dance together. He's like finally allowed to live. He's been so, he's been fighting so hard. He's been trying to build this community. He's been trying to protect his people and he's been trying to like be what everyone needs him to be for so long. And he finally gets to like let loose a little bit. And like, he has this, you know, romance that he then has to leave behind in, you know, to save the world essentially, which he does. I'm fascinated. And I'm then he fascinated. still loses her and he doesn't get to see her become who he knows she can be in this timeline. I mean, I guess she d she does become that person in the last moments, but like, you know, he doesn't get to see it through. Heimerdinger really did die. Uh, I was wrong there. <laughs> Whoops. He did. Uh, a lot of them died. A lot of them died. And uh, can we start talking about them? I guess we can. There's a lot. How many? How many? So Heimerdinger, as you just said, yep, uh, Jason Victor went together Rictus. as science bros. Mm -hmm. Rictus is gone. Maddie's gone. Um, Vander. Isha's gone. Warwick. Vander's gone. Jinx is gone. Um, in our Mama timeline. Mama Maderta? Mm -hmm. Did uh, I say that? Mama Mama's Maderta. gone. Silco obviously was gone. Just like from beginning to end, like so many characters are gone. Um... Mm -hmm. Tube, tube lady was gone. What was her name again? Rihanna. Rihanna. I don't know if we ever looked her up. <laughs> I think it's Rihanna. Um, yeah, like, yeah. There's. It's a lot of death. It's a lot of death. Well, and they did a lot of. Um, we got introduced to a lot of people at the end of last episode that we then saw die this episode. Um, mm -hmm. The, oh, the family uh, that I, split I up. Think of his and name. The, there was like the dude that had the two, like piercings or whatever those the like plates on his lip mm -hmm. and it we sh we saw him with his wife and kid at the end of the last the, episode the wolf looking dude we watched like him the die. sharp beard turret guy mm -hmm. like he got arrow to the neck also oh, yeah. mm -hmm. uh milo's potential love interest in the other storyline yep she yeah. dies yeah we got we mm -hmm. get like a little glimpse uh, like the pianist actually lived though 
didn't he? He, he, yeah, he, got, he started getting, getting taken, and then the he was, yeah, and he, he was at the, like, yeah, the wish paper, like, ending. So, mm -hmm. he got to live. Good for him. We need more musicians. Can you imagine being, like, just Joe Normal in the city, <laughs> just some average citizen trying to understand what the hell has happened the last, like couple months of this you know it's just like whoa, like nobody knows like about victor robots and nobody knows about like time travel and well, i think and they were the told Rose society like, and get out or stay and fight these are your yeah. two options like they did say I think that there was were... something big going on and you're either gonna fight or you're gonna run so yeah mm -hmm. be aware so i'm sure that there was just... some kind of like inkling of things there's got to be newspapers there's got to be word of mouth there's got to be something where it just is like the arcane is happening like, we have invited the mm -hmm. Arcane, and probably there's going to be a lot of naysayers of, like, Arcane is bad, versus, like, Arcane is great, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh no, Arcane is mm -hmm. screwing up our world, we should probably either stay and fight or go, so, I'm going to head out. Uh, I'm sure there's there's got to be some kind of, like, small storylines that we're missing out on simply by following our main characters, but that's okay. <laughs> But yeah, just like I'm just picturing them walking home, and the, the the whole city's littered with these dead robots, and then like weird fossilized goop off of all the walls, and and spray paint and colors everywhere from the chalk explosions, and uh, it's just there was a lot, <laughs> a lot to not know anything about. Mm -hmm. Jinx went out. We were talking about a little bit of the death that happened. So Jinx went mm -hmm. out. She did go out in a sacrifice. So you were right there. Um, Love I, that we got to I see hate. her have three hairstyles this episode. Three. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wildly um, different. I do, I do hate when shows have kind of a predictable out like that. Like, I didn't know it would be with, you know, saving Vi with Vander. Um, but, like, having, because then it just, I don't know. It, I, the shock is what gets me more emotional. Like, I knew it if was coming. If Vi had so died was... instead, that would have been more mm -hmm. shocking. Um, yeah, and it wouldn't I feel have like been that a bad would have, like hurt my heart. <laughs> yeah, and not that Jinx's doesn't, but it was like okay, yeah, I knew this was probably going to be a thing. Yeah, but I wonder, um, and this is pure wanting and pure just desire. But when Caitlin was looking at the blueprints of where Jinx had fallen, hmm. is like there a exit? chance she could mm -hmm. have gotten out through one of the side vents? Because we never saw mm -hmm. her die. Die. Mm -hmm. We just saw. Well, we explosion. saw her pull the explosion, and we know what happened the last time she pulled the explosion. She was okay. She technically died, but was saved, but kind of by the doctor. So it happened that time, and then there was one time, but mm -hmm. she got and the doctor brought backwards. his daughter back to life. Yes, that's true. But yeah. you know what? We're not getting a season three, so we'll never, uh, we'll never know. <laughs> but I like to think I thought I the did. humming was Jinx at first. I thought she was humming, and that was what we were gonna find out. But it wasn't. Mm. It was by humming. So okay, fine. But there is that question. Do you think she survived? I, I fully would have bet tons of money that the, the Echo's time machine bomb was going to be the reset. Like, I was waiting for it to go I far wanted to go back to the beginning. I wanted to go all the way back. Yeah, totally. Yeah, like, it was, like, I thought, and it's going slow motion. We're going to see all the, like, highlights of the series. And, you know, I don't know how it would have ended like, where it would have stopped, uh, you know, or, like, how it would have been different. Like, oh, like, we go back to the job because we saw in the other timeline that that's the initial butterfly. I effect. guess, but I still don't I like know. stories that just retcon like that. Go I all the way back do. to when the parents just don't die or something, like to like reset mm. everything. Mm. Like I, yeah, I did think oh, there was gonna I, be like I'm a flashpoint situation. I'm with you, Shar, on that. I don't like it when things do the reset. I was just expecting that the whole time because, like, especially whenever we deal with time travel stuff, so much writing in time travel movies and shows is that it's like well, you was me all along. You asked like, for something unexpected and you got something unexpected so mm -hmm. i do want to ask the question first of all yay victor being the little guy in the hood uh -huh. uh, <laughs> but we finally got an answer to that uh, -huh. uh but how do you think that victor came to be i wanted to ask that with all the timey wimey and all the multiple timelines and all that kind of stuff how did that victor come to be that was the victor if that had happened like if that if Echo wasn't there with his timey wimey bullshit, mm -hmm. and that explosion really had taken everybody out. Mm -hmm. And I think that's—I mean—that's where Victor. How did he reach Jace in his world? What do you mean? How did he reach Jace when he was young? 
Does oh, he just that? Know? Is he one like? In the hood? Is... I thought you were talking about the one in the hood that he sees. They're both when he's the in one hell. The same, aren't they? Sure, but I thought you were talking about that interaction. I don't know how he goes back to. I Jace I don't as know how that works. Does it just like the um omnipotence if that's the word i'm looking for it is does also transcend timelines because how did he give him that at the beginning of his timeline um, yeah i'm sure and you know. saw that he he tried the multiple multiple timelines to see what would happen because we saw the like 50 different runes across all the different stones but um yeah i'm not sure i think that's one of those things that maybe would have been sort of answered in the longer run of the show but they at this point it is just the magic like it's timey-wimey don't worry about it <laughs> and don't um, ask questions fair. i really loved it was really cool like obviously a horrific way to get there and horrible way to see but like that brief momentary like this is what being god must feel like and seeing like every soul on the you know in existence like that like glowing shimmer in space um that was just such a beautiful scene like as terrifying and horrible as the moment was it was just so pretty oh the art direction of this show is insane it, it never ceases to amaze it, it's what you brought up earlier in, uh, I think it was last episode, Char, uh, the like, is it weird to call something horrifying or scary beautiful? Like, that moment is terrifying because everybody's getting, like, face sucked into the ether, but it's like, oh, but look it, it's everybody's souls, all it's glowing so gold. It's sparkly. And, like, <laughs> yeah, and he's, like, I loved his, like, weird robot halo, like, uh, I don't know, just the, the art is so good. <laughs> Yes. And the fan fiction is going to be off the charts. <laughs> I'm going to write my own fan fiction where Bi dies at the end. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> so now that it's all kind of tied up in a nice little bow, because we know this is the final season because they've gotten canceled, are you all satisfied with the ending? Do you wish there was more? Do you think this was a good place to put a stop to it? What do you think? I think they did the best they could. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I mean, when you have, because uh, like you said, it was originally supposed to be three or four seasons. And when you're told, hey, actually have that, you know, I'm sure the writers were like, oh, oh no. <laughs> I honestly uh, don't so, know. I don't know if it was supposed to be three or four seasons. It was, they were initially signed for four. Um, yeah. They were initially signed um, for four. And I think uh, it was just more expensive than anyone thought um, it was going to be. <laughs> yeah. It, well, that and like Netflix just seems to have this track record with their best shows after season two. They're just like, it's too much money and let's just make new things. And it's like, it's so good. You... Yeah. I like it. I'm glad that we at least got a tie up. It may not be everything mm -hmm. that I wanted it to be from this season. I still like mm -hmm, season mm -hmm. more, one more, if I'm being completely honest. But mm -hmm. I think that this one had a lot of good moments. And I really mm -hmm. appreciate that. And that they they took chances with a lot of the characters and took chances with a lot of the storylines and still kept true to the ultimate, like, I, we got to get everybody fighting at some point, somehow, some way. Mm -hmm. And that it was coming from a video game out of all those things. I've never played mm -hmm. League of Legends. Will I ever play League of Legends? Probably not, because it's not my style of game. But that doesn't mean it's not a good series um and not a good game that some people are going to really resonate with seeing these characters actually fleshed out on screen so i and that's a fantastic that. point there's there's a lot of movie more so movies but and i think other tv shows but a lot of video game adaptations into other media hands down this is the best one like the, it, like i would argue that's because it isn't an adaptation it's like it takes place in the universe with some of the same characters but it has nothing to do with like the game doesn't really have a storyline it's just like um mm -hmm. an, a battle arena game like mm -hmm. all of these well, people and, have and like maybe powers but like and, and like you said, maybe that's the the reason is that the game doesn't have a story, whereas a lot of other games like or one. And now I like it, but it's pretty bad is the original Super Mario Brothers oh, movie. Like it's bad. <laughs> and the game loosely has a story. It, Plumber saves princess from dinosaur. Like but the like video game movies are notoriously awful. And to have a video game media be really good. <laughs> We've seen that a couple times refreshing. here recently, and I would love to see that that 
spark and that motivation continue as long as they continue to like treat the source material with respect or give it new life. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I also think, yeah, if for League of Legends specifically, it's because they're kind of given a blank slate. There's there's already like a lot of really great character design in the game and some interesting like powers that they can like, or like um, skills that they can kind of like weave into the story. But there wasn't like a world that they built for the video game. There wasn't a plot that they built for the video game. So like they got to just really play with this. Um, and I think it overall worked out really well. I didn't dislike the ending. I just thought it was a little anticlimactic. I think it could have been better, but I do think that is because they didn't have the time to fully flesh mm. out a lot of the stuff they probably would have been. So, I mean, mm -hmm. it's, I think, like I said, I think they did the best they could with the time they had. Yes, and, and satisfied that it had an end. Yes. Like, I'm not, like, yes, I want more, but I'm not left, like, what, what happened? So that kind of like, answers my next question, but if they were ever to come back, say, I don't know, Netflix happened to change their minds, would you all watch another season? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I'd be very curious to yeah. see what Do you think... <laughs> In this hypothetical sequel, would it be continuing these character stories or picking a new story from the legion of other characters? That new story? Um, I think new story. They, there were some seeds that they planted in this, like, where they referenced other characters kind of almost as, like, lore or as people that once existed and no longer exist. And those characters don't ever appear on screen, but they're kind of, like, mentioned. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that they could have a lot of fun, especially because this installment plays with time travel. I think that they could have a lot of fun following different characters and still kind of having like little cameos by some of these guys. Like, mm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, even um, the dead ones. Yeah. Yeah, it, totally. Yeah. So. And they've left it open too, like to go super comic booky with it as well with the like we know for a fact there are other timeline slash dimensions oh yeah so it's like the, another show could just be let's go see what's going on in the, in powder's timeline like yeah. if, if they do want to keep some characters but and they've played a lot with different art um and and design in this show as well i think if the biggest thing working against them continuing this was the production cost which I, is, to my understanding was because I mean you look at this animation of course that was expensive yeah. um, but they could like dumb it down a little bit and like use some of the more simple but still very beautiful animation styles that they use in some of these like music video sequences and stuff mm -hmm. and like especially if it's taking place in like a different timeline kind of like I mean we see Spider-Verse and like other animated things like kind of play with different animation styles to show different universes. Well, heck, they already timelines. played with a lot of the music on different styles, too. So, like, in each of the different timelines that we saw, we had different styles of music. And I thought that was fascinating for each of the different kind of characters and to build that world in a whole uniquely different way. So, I think they, they have potential. It's there's just... room. Yeah, there's room. Will Netflix allow it? Do the animators <laughs> want to come back and do it again? Will there be just as good of a story? We don't know. I'm yeah. I'm so curious how difficult like that process is. Like if the animators are like, we loved the show, but my god, this was difficult. Or if they're like, ah, oh, we can, we could, we could do it. <laughs> I wonder. But I hope if it does come back that the character I like to play as is in it. Who is it? Ah. Oh, which who's, who's your favorite character? We finally can come to that moment. Garen. No idea who that is. The win, baby. <laughs> um, Garen, but I'm also partial to Janna. Uh, She's hard to play, though. We shall <laughs> see. In the meantime, everybody, that is another wrap on a full season of Arcane and the entire series of Arcane. So thanks again to my lovely two guests, Zephyr and actor Pat. You can find myself over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Sharvana. If you ever want to come over and talk about this live on my channel, uh, you can also check out Pat over at twitch.tv slash actor Pat. And Zephyr, where can we find you? Instagram? I don't know. Oh, I'm not wow. really online. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you didn't tell. I'll be in her chat. This and is his. my roommate, and you might find them on my channel even more so. Uh, but in the meantime, everybody, thanks so very much for joining us for this. We will see you for the next series. Until then, goodbye for now. 